In today's tutorial, let's do a shot together. It's called the Frosted Layer Cake Shot, and this is by my assistant, Jeannie. And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're gonna work on my assistant, Jeannie Shaw, and she called this the Frosted Layer Cake Shaw, and she came up with this pattern and used the Karen Cakes, as you see here on screen. Now, the colors that you saw within her model here is the colors as they come out of the yarn ball, so there's no doctoring a color, so as the colors change, she just kept on going, and it creates the amazing shaw that she used. So, it uses two and a half of these uh, Karen Cakes, just like you see here, and you will also need a five and a half millimeter size eye, crochet hook in order to play. Also you're going to need one little stitch marker which could be spare yarn or stitch markers whatever you prefer. So let's get started on her pattern today. So let's get started on today's pattern and create a slip knot. This is classified as easy and of course if I'm going too fast there are slower tutorials available but you also can slow down the video with slow motion as well. So let's begin with the slip knot. Remember that never counts as one and we need to chain four. So we're gonna go one, two, three and four and let's stop and let's begin to work on the rest of this. So what I wanna do now is that I wanna go to the very first chain that we started right where I'm pinching right down here and I want to do eight double crochets in there. So I just wanna wrap the hook and going into that same chain I wanna put eight into this one. This will create a triangle looking shape. So let's count those together. So it was one and two, three, four, well I could try that one again because that was four, and five, six, seven, and eight. So there is my eight starting right there. So what I want you to do is I want you to count these numbers. So remember how we skipped over a certain amount? So that classifies as one of them. So there should be a total of what appears to be nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm gonna count that again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So with that chaining of four that you started with and the eight that was right in the center that gives you a total of nine. So you need an odd number in order to make this happen. So let's move along and we're gonna place a stitch marker. So we're gonna go into the fifth one. So right from the very first one. So go one, two, three, four, and five. Place your hook in to the top of the stitch and what we're doing is we're locating the very center of this so that we can keep an eye on where this is. So we're just gonna just pull it through. It's just gonna hold there and you're gonna know that this is the center point of your shawl each and every time and we're gonna move that up as we go. So let's put your hook back in. Let's turn our work and let's go for row number two. So let's begin row number two and this is classified as the right side. So we're gonna start seeing texture happen here. So let's begin. We're going to start off right where we are and we're going to chain four. This counts as a double crochet. So the chaining of three right there was a double crochet. Add one more which is your chain four. Okay, that counts as a double crochet and chain one. We're gonna come back down into the same stitch right here and we're gonna double crochet. So right every time you're on an edge, just like so, it's gonna appear like there's a gapping space which is what it should be. So the next one is going to be, next stitch is, is one double crochet. Just like this. And then the next one stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. So right down into this post, wrap that hook going into the side of the post and out the other side and you're gonna double crochet. So that's a front post double crochet. Here comes your texture right there and the next one is gonna be one double crochet like this. Now the next one that is marked, that's where we need to keep an eye on. So the next one that is marked, before we get there, we have to chain one first. So we have to compensate for it to be opening up. So this is what we're doing at this point. You're gonna double crochet right where you've done the, the other one. Okay, just like there. And then before you can move down to the other side of the triangle, you have to chain one first and then move down. So what you do on one side, you're gonna do on the other. So you see the other side was a double crochet in the next one. So we're just gonna do this one as a double crochet. And then if you look to the other side, the next one was a front post double crochet. So I'm just trying to get you to look to the other side to create a mirror image but you can also count out your stitches too. And then the next two here are going to be one double crochet each like this. So that one plus the turning chain but the turning chain has something a little bit extra for you and so not only is there one double crochet in there but you're gonna chain one and, and double crochet back into there. 
and that was just like you had started on the other side with the chaining of four and then one double crochet into the same one. So you should have what appears to be a triangle still. So let's move along to row number three. Now before I move up into the row number three what I wanna do is that see the stitch marker here? I wanna move it up to the center. So if it were me and I were you in time you would not have to move that up because you'll be able to recognize it. So it's the middle one just like you see here. Okay, so you wanna move up and you want to get to that middle one that's popping out. See that just follow it straight up and I want you to move that stitch marker up so you can identify it next time. It gets easier to be able to identify it as you get more experience. So let's, so let's start. We want to chain four which counts as a one double crochet and chain one. So one, two, three and four. Coming into the exact same stitch right where you were is you're gonna do a double crochet. So it's right in the top there and we wanna pay attention to that because you have a chain one space here. So what you need to do for this uh, row here is that we need to fill in all of these um, spaces including this first chain one space. So fill that space in with another double crochet and you're gonna double crochet yourself here into the next four. So you can count your stitches or you can just look for the signs once you get used to this pattern. So that was one, two, three, and four. Now here's where it's gonna vary. So you have a chain one space, a double crochet which is your center and a chain one space and another double crochet over here. So right here what we want to do here is that we want to kind of mimic what we've already done before. So you see that you got three double crochets. They had a chain one space. So in the chain one space this time is gonna be a double crochet, chain one, come into the middle one which will be the center. If you wanna move the stitch marker up after this point you can followed by a chain one and then come into the other side which is chain one space and you're going to double crochet like that. Now you're gonna just move across to the uh, other side and it's all just straight double crochet to here uh, to the other side except for when we get too close to the edge. So we're gonna repeating a certain patterns or certain rows as we go and once we get onto the repeat pattern that'll be become very easy for you. So right now you have a chain one space in the final turning chain so you're gonna put a double crochet in the chain one space and then on top of the turning chain it's gonna be a double crochet. Go right into a turning chain like don't do what I just did. So right into a turning chain so double crochet, chain one and double crochet just like that. So the one row that when we're doing this is gonna have the front post double crochet and the one row is just gonna be regular double crochets to make it easier for you. So let's move along to row number four. So let's turn our work and do row number four. So rows four and five are gonna be the repeat pattern as we get bigger and bigger. So let's uh, just move up our stitch marker just one last time so that you can see it. So I'm just gonna follow it straight up and again you'll be able to identify that in no time at all. You probably will not have to move these much and again Jeannie's uh, suggested that just to make it easier for you which is a great suggestion. So let's turn our work here and go up for row number four. So row number four we're gonna play with the front post double crochets again and then in row number five we're just back to double crochets in order to keep this pattern moving along. So we had a front post double crochet here in row number two just like here and this time we're gonna bring it back. So you have one here but now we gotta establish it once again and put more in. So to do that it's just gonna be very simple. So row number four. So we're gonna chain up four which is your double crochet and chain one just like that and you're gonna double crochet into that same stitch right at the top. So you already know how to do that just like that. So now she's asking us to put in a double crochet in the next chain one space. So just right in the chain one space and now we're gonna start doing our front post double crochet. So it's very simple what she has. So the next one is a front post double crochet and then the next stitch here is just a double crochet just like that. The next one is a front post double crochet. Are you getting it? Isn't that easy? And then the next one is a double crochet and you're gonna keep doing that until you get to that chain one space that is in the center point coming up over here. So we just keep adding more and more. This is giving texture and you keep this going along until you get to that chain one space. So the final one right before the chain one space is gonna be a front post double crochet. So just like we had before, so the first chain one space it's going to be a double crochet, chain one. 
you're gonna come to the middle one, okay, where it's marked. And if you can identify, great. And then chain one, come to the other chain one space on the other side and do a double crochet. So now you're gonna move down to the other side of the shell. So you got a mirror. So remember the last one here was a front post double crochet. So this means this one has to be a front post double crochet to begin to keep it even. So a front post double crochet, the next one is a, that's right, it's a double crochet. The next one's a front post. So it's just every other one is, a, is the other stitch. And you keep working yourself down the side until you get to that chain one space near the end. Just like that. So the last one then, just like so, is just gonna be quite easy. So right now, when we go to look at it, right now you see that there's three stitches in the very end. So you right into the side, here and here. So do you see that there's three? So when I go to look at it here, the last few stitches are going to be different than what is on the other side. So here is the two that are belonging together. The first one there is going to be a double, or front post double crochet as you finish. Okay, so now in the chain one space, you're going to put in a double crochet and then in the turning chain right here, you'll put a double crochet again, chain one and double crochet. Just like that. So when you look at it, you see you got three here and then a front post double crochet just like you had three on this side and then a front post double crochet. Let's move along. I'm going to show you this repeat pattern once again uh, later on but uh, let's turn our work and let's do row number five together. So row number five is the easy row of them all. So let's, and we're gonna do this every other row. So you're gonna chain up four which counts as your double crochet and chain one and coming into the same one just like there. So you've just now created that new gapping space that you will use later. And right here is a gapping space here and you're gonna fill that in with the double crochet. That's a chain one space there. And now you're just gonna do double crochets all the way to the center point again. And let's keep on going. I never moved up the stitch marker last time. I should have just for tutorial reasons but I'm hoping that you can identify it. So this one is just a matter of filling all them in with double crochets all the way back to the point. Okay, so you keep on going. So right into the last one here and then the next one is a chain one space. So here's chain one space, here's the middle, another chain one space. So in the chain one space it's gonna be a double crochet followed by chain one, come into the middle one, that's a double crochet followed by a chain one and then into the other chain one space is a double crochet. So you're just gonna move down then just following along every stitch is just gonna get a double crochet right into the near to the end and uh, we just wanna watch that on the other side. I am going to show you how to do number four once again because uh, you're just gonna keep repeating this pattern until you get to the size that you would prefer and those instructions are on there on the pattern and how big she got it as well. I'm also going to make sure that we finish on row number four she states and then the row number four is the one with the front post double crochet so that gives you an indication. So you can finish at any time, make it as big or as small as you want to. Just make sure you finish it on row number four. So coming no, near to the end, so here is the last stitch here. There is a, still a chain one space. We're gonna fill that in and in the turning chain we're gonna place in a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. Just like you see here. Okay, so let's uh, begin again and I'm gonna show you row number four once again. So as we go for row number four, the only difference is, is that it's bigger. Okay, so that it's longer here on both sides. Therefore, there's gonna be more front post double crochets in order to work with. So let's begin. We're gonna chain up four. Remember that's a double crochet and chaining a f uh, chain one. Coming into the same stitch right below into that same one is a double crochet. You're gonna fe feed this chain one space with the double crochet again and now we're going to begin doing those front posts again. So immediately in the one that starts right after is a front post double crochet and then we're gonna do a double into the next and front. And you keep alternating back and forth until you get to near to the center. So now I'm into the middle. So I can see that there's a chain one space, the center and chain one space. So right now this is, a, I finished off with the front post double crochet which is right and the first chain one space is gonna be a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the middle one like so, then chain one and double crochet into the next chain one space. 
So as you start this side, the first one is a front post double crochet and then you keep alternating back and forth. I think the color has just changed on my, my yarn ball as well which is kinda neat. So it's now I think more blue. It's hard to tell in this lighting. The lighting is exceptionally bright here at the studio. So I'm just alternating as I hit the other side and so row number four which is right now that I'm working on is gonna be the final row when you get to the size that you prefer and of course she has recommended sizes uh, that you want. It's a very generous shawl to keep you nice and warm in the, in the cooler temperatures. Um, it's great for wearing outside and etc. So I'm just alternating back and forth just like this. I skipped a stitch by accident again does happen. And how I know that is that this last stitch before it goes to this one, so this one right here should be a front post double crochet. So now in the chain one space I'm going to place in a double crochet and then in the turning chain itself it's gonna be a double crochet. I wanna go right into the chain not to a gap space. It's gonna be double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So now you're just gonna go back to row number five and row number five is just very simple. It's just double crochets all the way across. Watch out for that middle part and then you'll come out back to the other side and then finish off and then you'll be back to doing row number four once again which is all the texture. So here's what it looks like on the back. It's very simple on the back. The other side has texture. So you're just gonna keep going to the size you want and I'm gonna show you how to do her trim next. So once you get to the desired size that you want you have to finish on row number four. So you can see the texture is in front of me. So I wanna turn my work and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna work up along the side okay and come across and then along the bottom just like so. So to begin to do the edging then very very simple. It's just chain one in one single crochet into the, the beginning and she's asking for a single crochet then into the chain one space just like you see here. Okay and then single crochet into our uh, sorry now we have to do a chain two. So we single crochet in the first one, we single crochet into the chain one space and now we chain two. So she says single crochet into the next two stitches. So let's just go into the next two. So one and two and then she says to chain two again. So one and two and then single crochet in the next two chains. So you're not skipping anything on the row but what it's doing is it's creating, creating some pivoting kind of ideas. So one and two and then go to the next one just like this. So the next two are like that. So chain two and you're gonna work along the sides doing that until you get to the middle point and I'll show you what to do at the middle. So let me uh, uh, bring you back to the middle point and I'll show you what to do from that point. So as you get close to the middle you're just gonna follow the pattern as it turns around into the point. Okay so the next, so it's chain two and then the next two here are just going to be single crochets. So here's a chain one space and what I want to do is that I want to make sure that I'm operating this properly in order to do the corner. So what I want to do at that point is that I want a single crochet into each one of these three. So into a space, into the middle and into the space just like so and then you're gonna begin the pattern again. So what we have is the next two are gonna be single crochets like this, chain two and then coming into the next two as single crochets like this. So it kind of wheels around the bottom just like that and then it picks up once again of doing the same concept. So let me meet you on to the other side Let's, and then we'll do the base together which is the starting point that we had on the other side and that's what we're gonna do. So as we come out to the final side on this side over here we're just continuing the pattern as we were before. So we're just gonna carry it right to the single crochet or to the chain one space and then right to the very top. So now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna work ourselves along the top as she says it and so we're gonna turn it over. So here's what it kinda looks like at this moment. I've just here at the base so this your shoulders up here. This is the base. Obviously it will be a lot bigger. So now we're gonna work along the top edge just like this. So let's begin that. So right now she's telling us to do some single crochets into each row. So the rows come up and you'll see that they are at the tops here. So what she's asking us to do to begin is that we're going to single crochet into uh, right into the very first one right here. Ok 
Okay, so we're just gonna come into there and we've already kind of done it when we finished off the last one. So we're gonna just go right into the top just like here to a side post, chain two and then come to the next one over here. Okay, and then chain two and then come into the next row, chain two and chain two after that. And you keep working yourself all the way across like that. So chain two Okay, and then eventually you're gonna hit the center point like I'm about to. So chain two and you're doing the center point. Chain two and then jumping to the other side. If you wanna bury in your loose ends, now's the time to do it as well. So one, two and coming up to the side of the next rows. Use your darning needles if you would like to really hide in your yarn, of course. And just keep on going. So this uh, shawl has um, really some nice texture to it. It's not overdone. The yarn does the work to create the look that it has and then you're just gonna create it right to the end. So once you get into the very final end right here, I would just slip stitch it then to the beginning on the other side and then that's it. So this is kind of like your a miniature of the shawl. You can remove it, your stitch needle uh, markers. You can fasten off your yarns and uh, you can enjoy this great little cake. And once you get all more and more colors, you'll see that the colors will change on its own and you can create the look just like Jeannie has. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Craft. Have a good day. Bye-bye.